In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Tyranid Psychophage for your games of Warhammer 40,000. I'm going to be cover painting all the different colours of carapace on your larger Tyranids, how to paint the different shades of flesh and how we can use glazing to create interest, and I'll also be showing you how to tackle painting that massive chomper it has. This is an easy to follow step by step guide, showing you all the skills and techniques needed to get your miniatures painted. So by the end of this tutorial, you'll have the confidence and knowledge to be able to paint your Tyranid monsters. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael, and in this video I want to show you how to paint the Tyranid Psychophage good enough for display and for use in games of Warhammer 40,000. Any brushes and paints I use in this tutorial will be linked in the description as well as being shown on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. And if you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really do appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating all the content on the channel and it also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos I make for you. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who've made this tutorial possible. And I especially want to say a massive thank you to Michael Oakley, who's recently become a supporter of the channel. Thank you so much. I've already covered showing you how to paint the more numerous termigants, and I've even shown you how to tackle characters with the Tyranid Prime. But now I want to show you how to paint some of the larger Tyranid monsters, which I'm really looking forward to doing. To help make the Psychophage easier to paint, I've built it with the larger legs separate, and I've also chosen to leave it off the base. This is going to let us get to those hard to reach places that we normally wouldn't be able to get to if it had been fully assembled. I've also chosen to undercoat our Psychophage using the Wraithbone Undercoat Spray. This is going to help make those lighter flesh colours more vibrant and easier to paint. And if you want to know how I get my own miniatures ready for painting, including using sub-assemblies and undercoating them, I've got a separate video on the channel showing you how. And through this tutorial, I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Psychophage painted. And to make it easier to follow along with, I've split the tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get started with the flesh and explain some of the techniques that we use. The first thing we're going to do is to establish our base colour by painting the areas of flesh using Wraithbone. And I know we used the Wraithbone spray undercoat, but the colour from the sprays don't really match the colour from the pot with the same name. So using Wraithbone from the pot means we not only get the colour we actually want, it also gives us a chance to cover up any areas we may have missed when spraying. And when we have to neaten up and cover up any mistakes, it won't be so obvious. I would always paint a base colour first so we get a colour we actually want, instead of just relying on the spray undercoats. And we also want to make sure that we're painting a nice looking smooth solid colour which is easier to shade and highlight. To make sure we achieve best results when painting our miniatures, we can't overlook the basics, starting with thinning your paints. And I find an equal amount of water just the trick. I also like to remove some of the paint from the brush onto some paper towel first so we don't have an overloaded brush giving us more control when painting. When it comes to painting your miniatures, you want to keep your brush moving so the paint doesn't build up and we want to avoid going over any areas we've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And once you're done covering an area, because we thinned our paint, it won't have covered very well. So we need to go in and paint another layer to get a nice solid colour we can work with. We want to paint with multiple thin layers because this is going to let us get that solid colour without losing any details on the miniature. Continue painting these layers until you're happy you have that solid colour, just make sure to let each layer fully dry first before doing another one. It's easy to overlook how we're applying paint to our miniatures and worry more about those fancy techniques, but unless we get ahead around those basics first, those fancy techniques won't have much impact or effect. Now we've got our solid base colours painted, you should feel confident enough to get some of those other base colours done, starting with kids left flesh for the abdomen and those fleshy areas in the joints. When you finish doing that, we can move on to our next base colour, which is Bugman's Glow, for the area that connects the body and abdomen, as well as the ridge details in the limbs and carapace. If you're new to miniature painting, or just looking to improve, the best place to start is to just focus on painting all your base colours first. 
making sure we're practicing the basics and keeping everything neat and tidy. Our psychophage is looking pretty flat and could do with some definition which we're now going to create with a wash. To make our wash we want to thin down some Volupa's pink contrast with 12 parts Lamy medium. Then in the contrast with Lamy medium this way dilutes the strength of the contrast so we get more of a subtle finish on our light flesh colours. And I do recommend mixing a pot of this thin wash so we can use it on all of our Turinid miniatures. This not only saves us having to go through the process of making it every time we need it, but it also means that it's going to be the same consistently every time. When you're ready, we want to apply this over the areas of flesh we just painted, and you want to use enough so it covers these areas comfortably. And even though we do want it to flow into all the recesses and shallow details, try not to let it pull too much in these areas as we really do want to achieve a subtle effect with the wash. And you'll find we'll need to continually remove excess wash as it dries, as it's such a thin wash, but this is easily done with your brush. And once this is dried, you'll be able to see how it's subtly brought out all those details and shapes, creating definition without overpowering our base colours. Using shades and washes are a great way to create definition on more organic features and miniatures with much softer details because of how it dries. And trying to achieve this using other techniques and methods can be more difficult and time consuming. Using a wash can make things look a bit messy and affect the vibrancy of our base colour. So the next thing we're going to do is use a glaze on the more raised areas to lighten them back up. This is also going to help bring out all those different shapes making details stand out more. The colour we're using is Wraith Bone and to make this a glaze we want to thin it down with two parts water making it more transparent which allows more of the colours and tones on the layer underneath to come through. And even though our glaze is quite thin, we don't want to think of this as a wash. We always want to apply a glaze in an even thin layer. We can also build up the strength of a glaze, apply multiple layers. Just make sure to let each layer completely dry before applying another one. You really want to take your time with this step as rushing it, we can completely ruin the different tones the wash created in the flesh. Along with using washes, Glazing is another method that's going to help us paint our more organic details and features and it's a technique that we're going to be using quite a lot throughout this tutorial but don't worry because it's a lot of fun to do. Now we want to work on the fleshy coloured abdomen and lighten this area back up as well. So let's work up to a lighter colour for the abdomen using an equal mix of kids left flesh and flayed one flesh and again making this a glaze. We want to make sure to let those different tones and colours to come through. To achieve smoother transitions between colours, we can use a glaze of the colour we're transitioning from, which these larger areas will likely need. So here we're using a Kizla Flesh Glaze. And once you're done, you should see how this has achieved a more fleshy organic look. To finish the midsection, let's first use a Bugman's Glow Glaze to neaten up and lighten the more raised areas of flesh. And then continue to lighten these areas using a glaze made with an equal mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. When we think of glazing, we think of it as being a more advanced technique, which we should be avoiding until we think we're better miniature painters. But it's actually very achievable with some practice, and it's not that different to how we normally paint. Because we're painting a larger Tyranid monster, this gives us an opportunity to spend some time working on making things look more interesting. And one of the things we can do, we can actually do this using our Tyranid flesh wash we made earlier, and applying this in the same way we would a glaze, in even thin layers to build up the colour gradually creating a gradient. And if you want to, we can switch to using a Barrochnar Burgundy Glaze, gradually getting darker towards the end of some of the limbs. With that done, the only thing left to do for the body is to highlight it. And I really want to go into some detail about highlighting, because like glazing, it's another important technique to learn if we want to elevate our painting. In this first section of the tutorial, I'm going to be talking more about the process of highlighting and how we go about doing it. And then later in the tutorial, when we're painting the carapace, I'll be talking more about the different types of highlights we can do. When it comes to highlighting, I'll make sure to keep a brush separate for it, so I know I've got a brush that's going to be up for the task when needed. Again, we want to be sure to thin our paint and remove some of that excess paint from our brush to give us more control and to prevent thick blobby lines. When you're ready, let's use some white scar to paint thin lines along edges and raise details to help draw attention to them and to help define the shape of things. 
I'm not doing a lot of highlights at this stage as you don't tend to get many hard edges on squishy fleshy areas so I'm really just picking out the obvious edges and details. And if you want some extra help and learn about what helps me when highlighting, I've got a dedicated video on the channel showing you. For me, highlighting has to be one of the most important techniques to learn and practice, because not only does it help to improve the look of our miniatures, it also teaches us better hand-eye coordination and brush control, making us better miniature painters overall. To highlight where we darken the limbs, we can use our wraith bone which helps bring everything together. The wraith bone is also used to highlight the abdomen instead of white scar as this could be too much for the more fleshy coloured area. The other area we need to highlight is the midsection using Cadian flesh tone. And once you're done, hopefully you'll see the difference a few highlights can make to the look of our miniatures. Now we've finished painting the main body of our psychophage and learnt some of the techniques used we can move on to getting its massive maw painted along with the remaining fleshy bits. In this section I'm going to be showing you how to paint the massive maw and finish any remaining fleshy areas. So in the first section of this tutorial we've learned a lot about the different methods and techniques that we use to get our miniatures painted. So now you should have a better understanding and the confidence to help you get the rest of this psychophage painted. One of the most prominent features on the psychophage is its massive maw with all those teeth and fleshy tendrils. To get this painted we want to first paint our base colour which is going to be Galvor back red, making sure to use multiple thin layers to get that smooth solid colour we're after. The best way to create definition for an area that looks so complicated and detailed is with a wash. For the maw and the tendrils we're going to use an all oil shade which is used as it is from the pot. When that's dry you'll see it's darkened everything quite a lot, so now let's use some Galvor back red to lighten things back up, including those fleshy tendrils picking out the raised areas along them. We're now ready to continue working on the maw using a Bugman's Glow Glaze to make the details stand out even more. This can be tricky and don't worry about getting right to the back, just stick to what you can get to and take your time. Now the more awkward bit is out of the way, let's highlight the inside of the maw with Cadian Flesh Tone. Now its giant maw is done, let's focus on these fleshy tendrils which we want to continue gradually getting lighter starting with a corn red glaze, then a Bugman's Glow Glaze, Cadian Flesh Tone Glaze, Kislev Flesh Glaze and finally a Wraith Bone Glaze. Remember we can help smooth things out with a glaze of the colour we're transitioning from. Don't worry if you don't have all these paints, this is just a simpler and a more consistent way to achieve that shifting colour. You can easily mix these colours or you can make more use of a glazing technique to achieve that gradient. To highlight the tendrils start with your Bugman's Glow for the darker areas and when you're not able to see this highlight change to Wraith Bone and then White Scar for the very tips of the tendrils. The other areas we need to do before we move on to painting the carapace are these fleshy bits on the claws which are going to be a darker flesh colour. Our base colour for these areas is going to be an equal mix of Galvor Back Red and Bugman's Glow. And when you're done painting the base colour, let's use some Norn Oil again to create our definition. Now that's fully dried, we can use a Bugman's Glow Glaze to lighten areas like we've done previous with the other fleshy areas. I like these areas with Cadian Flesh Tone. I know what I'm showing you seems like a lot of work and effort and you'd be right to think that, but if we want to achieve a high standard of miniature painting it's going to take time and I wouldn't expect to finish something like this in just one sitting. Enjoy the process and by the time you've finished you'll have something you can be really proud of. With those darker fleshy areas painted we can now move on to painting all the different colours of carapace. I now want to show you how to paint a darker more aged carapace for larger monsters as well as the other coloured carapace on our psychophage. Up until now we have been working with our psychophage off the base to make painting the flesh easier, but now we're done you can attach it to a base or mount it or you could continue to paint it like we have been, just be careful of what you've already painted. Let's get straight into it painting the base colour of our main carapace using Barracknar Burgundy, again we really want that solid base colour. Having a solid colour to work with means anything we do after will contrast better and have more impact. 
The next thing we want to do to our carrot paste is give it an all over wash using Norn Oil. This is going to add interest and definition as it dries, not only in the recesses but across the uneven surfaces. We can apply this a second time once it's dried to darken the carapace even more. And now that's dried, we can work on getting this carapace highlighted. So we covered the process and technique of highlighting in the first section of the tutorial. But now we're painting the carapace, I can show you the different kinds of highlights we can do. The first highlight we're going to do is called a chunky highlight. We're using Screamer Pink for this, and this highlight wants to be quite a thick line so it can still be seen once we're done painting our thinner highlights after. Paint this along all the edges as well as on all the raised details. And at the same time as painting this chunky highlight, let's create some texture painting these lines along these more prominent edges of the carapace. Because the carapace has some less defined raised areas, these line highlights I've been showing you don't work so well. Instead, what we can do is a volumetric highlight which involves glazing a highlight colour, giving us a softer highlight. So let's start with the Screamer Pink Glaze to start our volumetric highlights. You can use a Barraknar Burgundy Glaze to soften the transition. These first highlights will really help to bring out all those different shapes of the carapace. Now we're moving on to an edge highlight, and this is very similar to the line highlight we did in the first part of the tutorial. For the edge highlight, we're using an equal mix of Screamer Pink and Dechala Lilac and this is painted along all the edges and details again, but within all those chunky highlights we've done. To make this easier, you can angle your brush and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For places you can't do this, we need to take our time painting thin lines where we want our highlights to be. This includes painting more of those texture lines, this time make them less frequent and varied. Now it's time for a fine highlight so we can make some edges more prominent and stand out more. For this we're going to use Dechala Lilac. Don't forget about those volumetric highlights either, working up to and finishing with Dechala Lilac as well. The last highlight for our carapace is called a spot highlight and this involves painting dots of open grey on corners and points of the carapace to really bring out those details even more. So this might seem like a lot of effort and a lot of steps, but don't feel like you have to follow everything that I'm doing. I just want to show you what's possible, and you should only ever do what you feel comfortable doing. Now you've had all that practice highlighting and learning about all the different highlights, you'll have no problem finishing the black carapace and red claws. To paint the black carapace, start with some Abaddon Black for our base colour. Next we're going to get our chunky highlight painted using Dark Reaper. For the edge highlight we're using Thunderhawk Blue. And when you're done let's use Vermizian Grey again for the finer highlights to make some edges stand out more. Finish our black carapace with those spot highlights using Ulthwin Grey. For any claws our base colour is going to be Galvor Back Red. Creating some definition with Norn Oil and letting that dry. After that we can use Corn Red for those chunky highlights and then we're painting our edge highlights using Mephiston Red. Finish our claws with a fine highlight of Bugman's Glow and finally Cadian Flesh Tone as a spot highlight. For these larger monsters and characters, it's always worth spending that extra time and effort adding those cool effects and details, helping these miniatures to stand out in your army. And it's also a great opportunity to improve our miniature painting skills, trying out those new techniques. Our psychophage is nearly done, there's only a few smaller details to paint which I'm going to show you how to do in the final section of the tutorial. There's only a few smaller details left to paint which I'm now going to show you how to do. As well as showing you how to paint the psychophage, I've also covered how to paint the more numerous tyranids and the more specialised characters with wings. So if you need more help painting your tyranids, make sure to go and check out those tutorials as well. One of the features of the Psychophage are these plumes of smoke rising from its back, and to paint these start with some grey sear for the base colour, again work into a nice solid colour. To give the smoke its colour, we can use some Griff Charger Grey Contrast, only covering about a third of our smoke. 
We then want to apply the Griff Charger grey contrast a couple more times to deepen the colour as we get to the bottom of the smoke. After you're done using the contrast, let's use a grey sear glaze and some of the raised areas to lighten them back up. Then finish the smoke with an open grey glaze to highlight. For all those teeth, we can start with Zandri Dust for the base colour. We can then highlight these teeth using Wraith Bone. And finally, the last thing to do is to paint the eyes, and this can be done with some Iandan Yellow Contrast. I really do enjoy painting miniatures from the Tyranid range, because they're so different from the other factions in 40k, and they give us a great opportunity to paint the more organic fleshy details and features, and they also allow us to get to grips with techniques like glazing. So let's see how they turned out. Our Psychophage is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel showing you how to paint your Tyranids, so make sure to check those videos out as well. I really do enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.